to my shop and my channel. I blow art. That's what I do. So you want to be a glass blower, or in this case, I guess more specifically, as I'm told, a lamp worker. This is a little video, just like tools you're going to need, general setup. Most of the footage is from my temporary shop. Uh, I was going to scrap it, but then I figured, well, a lot of people are just starting out. Maybe it's just a side thing. It's just a hobby. They have a little bit of money. So I figured that space and that setup is DIY simple, something you can do on the weekends. You're kind of working outside. <laughs> um, limited, but it's a good startup. You can take all of that and what I've shown you here in the last couple of videos and put it all together and make it work for you. So without further ado, enjoy. Here is a shot of the temporary shop that I had set up. Uh, you can see this featured in my intro video on my channel, so if you haven't checked that out, go uh, check it out. Short, sweet, to the point. So this is how I set everything up. I'm right-handed, so, you know, a left-handed person might do it differently. It's just really what you're comfortable with. Just an example for those getting started. First and foremost, you need a torch. These torches here I found on eBay used for about $20 a piece. They have interchangeable tips, so you can get a really fine flame or bigger, bushier flame depending on the size of the tip. They're great for starting out. If you're doing bead making, maybe making some small pipes or pendants, you name it, small sculptural work. They're perfect for beginners. They're perfect for, especially for somebody who is still on the fence as to whether or not they want to make this their livelihood or they just want to do it on the side as a hobby. So if you have no skills whatsoever, pick one of these up. It's a great investment and you won't, you know, break the bank in doing so. If you're someone with a little more experience, maybe you've taken some classes or learned a few things from a friend, you're super serious about digging your heels in, I suggest you go ahead and invest a little bit more and get a better, bigger torch. Red Maxes are great to start off with for beginners. Any of the GTT series, the smaller ones, Carlisle, they all have great torches depending on your uh, application. This is a Mirage. I love it. I still have a lot to learn. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to sharing the journey with all of you. Next up are gas tanks. Get yourself an account with your local gas supplier. You can buy the K-tanks outright or you can rent them, lease them. Propane, same deal, buy or least depending on the place. You can fill them regularly because you're going to go through a lot of gas. With your gas tanks you will need regulators. So pick up an oxygen regulator and a propane regulator. You also need some hoses and some clamps, maybe some splitters depending on the type of torch that you're using. I also suggest picking up some flashback arresters at least for the tanks if not for the torch they may save your life one day or at least give you peace of mind. Get yourself some wrenches for your regulators and any other attachments for your hoses or torch they will come in handy and you'll want a pair exclusively for that purpose. You will also need good ventilation. You can check out my last video of how we set up uh, the ventilation system for the new shed. This is just a shot of what we had set up for this temporary space, but this is really important. You should not be blowing glass if you don't have a good ventilation system. So check that video out for more detail and uh, make sure you have something set up when you set up your own space. Safety glasses should be next on your list. You will most definitely need a pair of these to save your precious eyeballs. The ones that I have here that I work with are pretty good to start off with. You know, if you're doing heavier stuff, get a darker shade, but protect your balls. This is a spark lighter to light your torch. I know most of you probably have 
big gliders out there, but you know what happens to them? They always end up part of the big collective. It's a good backup to have always. You, all you need to do is change the flint every once in a while, but it usually works, you know, nine times out of ten, or 99 out of 100, whatever. However you want to do the math. Tweezers are up next. Get yourself a few pairs, a few sizes, you'll go through a lot of these. As you can see, some of mine are pretty worn out. <laughs> They're great for manipulating the glass, shaping the glass, pinching, pulling, all that fun stuff. Uh, they can help with sculptural work. They're just a really handy, simple, relatively inexpensive tool to have. Ah, uh, the fiber blanket. Mine has been beat to hell, but it's a good investment, especially if you have a kiln like mine that doesn't have a garage door. You can get your glass nice and warm, or you can flame anneal it, stick it in there, let it chill while you go pee, or do whatever you need to do, and then you can come back to it, and, you know, most likely it won't be cracked. Nine times out of ten. And these next few tools are for shaping. This is the graphite push. You can put it in the flame and it's not going to destroy it. A wonderful tool if you are a pipe maker. You will use this a lot. Real simple, real useful. There's a few of these that I will go over that are all for just helping you shape the glass, manipulate it while working in the flame. Another tool you will use to manipulate the glass is your tungsten pick. I use it to open up small holes. You can also use it for shaping. It comes in very handy. Graphite reamers and rods. Shaping tools you can use to manipulate the glass after you have heated it up. Um, these are great for making nice round openings, also helping to open, widen the holes that you make and blow out. They come in really handy and they are not too sensitive to the heat. You can work them right in the flame if need be and they are a pretty inexpensive investment all around. Also in the graphite family, a graphite plate comes in handy. It sits on your table. You can use it to sit your glass upon, to flatten out the bottom of a pipe or a cup or whatever it is that you may be working on, back of a pendant, you know. They come in really handy. They're great. They're, again, inexpensive and they are a necessity. Along with the graphite pad, I'd pick yourself up a graphite paddle same thing it's just free you can lift it up work with it in the flame and it flattens surfaces and helps you shape glass really comes in handy they come in all different sizes this size right here um, is probably like a two by three inch it's easy enough to manipulate and great to start off with do not touch hot glass Get yourself a pair of grabbers. They come in all different shapes and sizes for different applications, whether it be pipe making or you're making vessels, wine glasses. They are essential for when you're taking your work off of your blow hose or blow tube or whatever it may be. They save your hands a whole lot, so <laughs> definitely get some of those and add them to your starter setup. Also get yourself a pair of cutters. You can get a pair of metal shears like this, maybe a file. They come in handy for nipping off little bits like you can see here. They're relatively inexpensive and they will come in handy. Because glass is hot and sometimes things happen, make sure you have a water bucket nearby where you can throw your little scraps that you nip off or if a piece explodes and cracks, you can throw it in there without burning yourself or the table or the house down. And last but not least, get yourself a kiln. This little paragon does what it needs to do right now. We'll love to upgrade and hopefully someday soon that will happen. Something you absolutely need when you are blowing glass.
glass, especially if you're going to sell it, you need to be able to anneal it at the proper temperature. Uh, it will just harden up your glass and be less likely to crack and it will produce a more durable product. So I hope that helps answer some questions, maybe help a few of you who are just getting started with the basics and you know this isn't an end-all be-all kind of like need all of these things it's just a generalization it's what I learned what I work with uh, it also depends on what level you want to do do you want to be a bead maker do you want to be you know a pipe maker do you want to do jewelry do you want to do marbles there's so much that you can do um, with this medium it's wonderful so find what feels good oops Sorry, that's a little homage to uh, Yoga with Adrian. Check her out too, she's awesome. Anyway, um, so I hope it answers. If you have any more questions, comments, you know where to put them below. Like, subscribe, check out the Patreon, become a patron, check out the Instagram, Twitter, all that good, fun stuff, whatever. Um, and oh, as always, do good, be good, and don't be a douchebag. Love you. Bye. Also, a very special shout out to my patrons, Cole Cameron, and my newest patron and long lost friend, David Mayu. I appreciate your continued support from the bottom of my heart. You guys rock.